Now shall the daughter of Sion be completely hedged in. He has laid siege against us. They shall smite the tribes of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. And thou, Bethlehem, house of Ephrata, art few in number to be reckoned among the thousands of Judah. Yet out of thee shall one come forth to me to be a ruler of Israel, and his goings forth were from the beginning, even from eternity. Therefore shall he appoint to them to wait till the time of her that travails. She shall bring forth, and then the remnant of their brethren shall return to the children of Israel. And the Lord shall stand and see and feed his flock with power, and they shall dwell in the glory of the name of the Lord their God. For now shall they be magnified to the ends of the earth. And she shall have peace when the sword shall come into your land. And when he shall come upon your country. And there shall be raised up against him seven shepherds. And eight attacks of men. And they shall tend the Assyrian with the sword. And the land of Nebrod with her trench. And he shall deliver you from the Assyrian. When he shall come upon your land. And when he shall invade your coast. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many peoples. As do falling from the Lord. And as lambs on the grass. That none may assemble nor resist among the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many nations. As a lion in the forest among cattle and as a lion's whelp among flocks of sheep, even as when he goes through and selects and carries off his prey, and there is none to deliver. Thine hands shall be lifted up against them that afflict thee, and all thine enemies shall be utterly destroyed. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will utterly destroy the horses out of the midst of thee, and destroy thy chariots, and I will utterly destroy the cities of thy land, and demolish all thy strongholds. And I will utterly destroy thy sorceries out of thine hands, and there shall be no soothsayers in thee. And I will utterly destroy thy graven images, and thy statues out of the midst of thee. And thou shalt never any more worship the work of thine hands. And I will cut off the groves out of the midst of thee, and I will abolish thy cities. And I will execute vengeance on the heathen in anger and wrath, because they hearken not. Um, if one is overreaching in this effort, then they may actually fail altogether to grasp some of the more simple concepts that are meant to be uh, taken and known about. For example, so it says right here, we're in Micah chapter 5, and we're going to come back to this again later, but I'm going to read a couple of parts that I really want to stress more than anything. This is verse 7. Don't worry, you're going to get to hear the whole thing and you'll see what you'll see it, it, it'll be cool. You get to, the, 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 this these are the things I want to talk about. Um, and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles now, now, the, now the Gentile is capital. Now I want you to understand something. A lot of people have read this, but I'm going to break it down to you. This is so cold. A lot of people try to tell you that everybody who's not a Jew is a Gentile. That's not true. Everybody who's a named race is not a Gentile. Okay? Here we go. 
and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles, capital G, giving it uh, uh, the the aura onus, if you will, of um, of a specific thing, but even more specific, the humanoids. Uh, these are the same creatures that scientists have said existed for who have how I mean you know we're not going to go into the millions of years but let's just keep it realistic and say that earth has been here for give or take 8,000 years maybe 10,000 and this is life as we know it now right now I'm just getting to the story of the book of Enoch so that way I don't have to get to it and I'm going to read to you what happens <clears throat> and we're going to read back in the genesis of <clears throat> this exact happening and why this is so important and i'm going to read the verse before what i'm reading to you as well to give it real context so we're at chapter 5 verse 7 right and it says and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many peoples, as dew falling from the Lord, and as lamb on the grass. Now that's a very important concept, and as lambs on the grass, because the same lambs that turn into rams or sheep in the in the in the in the concept and in the story, in the prophecy vision of the scribe. Uh, a man turned into angel, Enoch. Okay. Super epic. Really under understated his epicness is, but we're not even going to go there right now. Uh, what we're going to talk about is the fact that those same lambs are in reference to what they became and who they are as people now. So this, this is, once again, I need y'all to understand the cleanness in spirit. Hear me. Okay. That none may assemble nor resist among the sons of men. Now, when it says that, it's a semicolon. Right on. And when it's saying this with the semicolon, I need y'all to understand. When it says that none may assemble, nor resist among the sons of men, it means that they don't, they can't come together, and start and 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 and, and do things that are against what you're supposed to do, right on. Nor coming together, resisting in that fashion, but also just resisting by being resilient. Now, the reason why this is all important is because. Notice that the Gentiles and the many people and the sons of men are all different. Okay? If Gentiles were sons of men, there would be no need to call them Gentiles. Right. As far as the many people are concerned, I'm not going to get too carried away with that. Uh, we'll read about their some of their animalistic behavior that I've already distinguished who these characters are. Uh, here we go. Um, verse 8. And the Gentiles, excuse me, and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many nations. Now it's many nations, not many peoples, right? As a lion in the forest among cattle, and as a lion's whelp when he, and as a lion's melt whelp among flocks of sheep, and this is like a young lion, right? <clears throat> Even as when he goes through and selects and carries off his prey, and there is none to deliver. Okay, what's beautiful about that? Is that it gives credence to where the people I'm saying come from, which in the bloodline, Torah, before Torah, we'll, we'll read it in a minute, but somebody was born a lion. Can you dig that? From the loins of the bull. Now, 
I know people want to say that the wives are probably why this takes place. But what's more awkward is that you can't be right because who made themselves a giant? Nebrot or Nimrod? And we're going to read about all this now, but we're going to read verse 5 to verse 6. And then we're going to see how people feel. No, just verse 6. And they shall tend the Assyrian with the sword, and the land of Nebrod with her trench. And he shall deliver you from the Assyrian when he shall come upon your land, and when he shall invade your coast. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I won't get into the context of what that's talking about right this moment, but I will say that it does involve the Messiah. Um, now, we're going to slowly stream back to the book of Genesis. I got to, oh, oh, wow. Put one on my little bookmarks there. Bang, bang. Okay, verse 8 of chapter 49, and it goes like this. Judah, thy brethren hath praised thee, and thy hands shall be on the back of thine enemies. Thy father's son, thy father's sons shall do thee reverence. Judah is a lion's wealth from the tender plant, my son. Thou art, thou art gone up, having crouched, thou liest as a lion, and as a whelp, who shall stir him up? Now we're going to stop right there on that whole point, and I'll have to get to a couple of different pieces of scripture. Uh, uh, a little bit later, I'll I'll throw them into the recording, or 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 I'll, I'll f they'll find their way into the video. Don't worry. Um, where Judah in particular is called the remnant, or is considered the remnant. You know what I mean? But the reason why it's called the remnant of Jacob, let me explain it right now, is right before Judah gets blessed, it says. Verse 5, Simeon and Levi uh, uh, accomplished their injustice of their cutting off. Let not my soul come into their counsel, and let not my inward parts contend in their conspiracy. For in their wrath they slew men, and in their passions they hold a bull. Cursed be their wrath, for it was willful, and their anger, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Stop right there. So, when this is spoke on, right, people have to understand that Levi is in Israel more so than he's in Jacob. Jacob, when you read a lot of the uh, uh, contextual things that are said about Jacob, you get the idea that Jacob is more or less the, the, the Jehudite and Benjamite and Levite incorporation of... Simeonites, right on, and, 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 and I'll have to go back into the book of, I want to say the Judges, is it the Judges, or is it Joshua, I'm pretty sure it's Judges though, and we'll have to re-break down the whole situation where Simeon joins Judah in the takeover of the cities that they get, you know what I mean, um, and that's a big deal. It's a very big deal because it, it, it speaks to the understanding um, that a person will or won't apply to the situation. Now, let's just go ahead and keep it on board. I'm going to go back to the Genesis. And I'm trying to keep everything with you guys, but I have to illustrate all these things. Otherwise, it won't make any sense. So let's go ahead and. Let's go ahead and speak to this. You know what I'm saying? It's, we're at chapter 89. And we're going to read. Uh, verse 1 on down. And one of those four went to that white bull, and it's talking about angels right now, just in case you don't remember. The four angels who were like white men, right? 
didn't say like the sons of anyway. Well, we're not gonna go into like how the children of heaven or the 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 sons of the children of heaven look, but not not distinguishable to them all the way. But like white men, hear me. And one of those four went to that white bull and instructed him in a secret without his being being terrified. But we have to remember that Noah was born what? Whiter than snow and redder than a rose. Go ahead. So he's seen somebody who looked just like him. That's why he's not scared. He was born a bull and became a man. Interesting concept. And built for himself a, uh, and built for himself a great vessel and dwelt thereon. And three bulls dwelt with him in that vessel, and they were covered in. And again, I raised my eyes toward heaven and saw a lofty roof with seven water torrents thereon. And those torrents flowed with much water into an enclosure. And I saw again, and behold, fountains were open on the surface of that great enclosure. And that water began to swell and rise upon the surface. Not inside the earth, but upon the surface. And I saw that enclosure till all its surface was covered with water. And the water, the darkness, and the mist increased upon it. And as I, and as I looked at the height of that water, that water had risen above the height of that enclosure and was streaming over that enclosure. And it stood upon the earth. So what it's saying is this right here is that all the oceans, or what what you would consider oceans, and all the all the bodies of Earth, the abyss actually itself now too being opened up. It literally was allowed wherever the abyss is located on the planet. Notice these things are all important, but it was allowed to fill up and cover the whole Earth. Right on. Anyway, people are like, I don't believe you. You don't have to. Here we go. And all the cattle of that enclosure were gathered together until I saw how they were sank and swallowed up and perished in that water. But that vessel floated on the water while all the oxen and elephants and camels and asses sank to the bottom with all the animals so that I could no longer see them. The only clean animal there is the oxen. And they were not able to escape. But perished and sank into the depths. But remember, the oxen were the ones who the stars of heaven fell and mated with. Thank you very much. Not the cows, but the oxen. Keep that in mind. Oh, I want to break it all down to y'all. Just understand that the vision Enoch had was about the entire life, everything that we know. And, and, and now I understand why the Most High God didn't give everything to one man like that. I can see, I can see it because uh, the powers that be will never believe what I'm saying now. And that's the, that's the uniqueness of it, but carrying on. And again, I saw in the vision to those water torrents were removed from that high roof. And the chasms of the earth were leveled up, and other abysses were open. Maybe I'm not tripping. Maybe I'm right. The abyss opened up, the certain abyss opened up, fills up with water, floods everything out, and it says these. I don't know, man. I mean, when you read stuff like that and you're reading it in context, Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to this. And again, I saw in that vision till those water torrents were removed from that high roof and those chasms of the earth were leveled up and other abysses were open. It's, I mean, it's as clear as day, you know, it's plural. And I'd never looked at it like that until now. So maybe I'm not tripping. We'll just move forward. Uh, then... Then the water began to run down into these, till the earth became visible. But that vessel settled on the earth, and the darkness retired, and light appeared. So, this is true. There's more than one abyss. Ah. <laughs> and maybe one's open, these ones are closed. It allows for the, this, this explains living in Middle Earth. 
Ah, uh, having the migrate. I, I could imagine so many of them died down there just trying to survive. Uh, the, 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 there would have had to have been flooding in certain areas in Middle Earth. It's just unforeseeable that there wasn't. Um, where are we at? Now, let's get to the, the most important part. Oh, my goodness. Did all that talking to do this. But that white bull, verse 9. But that white bull, which had became a man, came out of that vessel. And the three bulls with him. And one of these three was white like that bull. And one of them was red as blood. And one was black. And this is where they get the whole Simham Japheth nonsense from. And that white bull departed from them. And they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds. So that the excuse me, so that there arose different genera. Now understand this. What I'm about to read to you is gonna bust all the heads of everything wide open. And I'm gonna bring and I'm gonna read about Nebrot again. Verse 1 of chapter 11. And all the earth was one lip, and there was one language to all. Verse 6, and the Lord said, Behold, there is one race and one lip of all, and they have begun to do this. Stop right there. If you guys think that I'm tripping, what I'm about to read to you is what happens after the earth is divided. And we're going to read that verse, and we're going to read it also in chapter 11. And they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds, so that there arose different genera, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, swine, falcons, vultures, kites, eagles, and ravens. And among them, so this is after all of that, was born a white bull. And they began to bite one another but that white bull which was born them which was born amongst them begat a wild ass and a white bull with it now stop right there what's very interesting is that it doesn't speak on the other sons that you know that abraham had you find that interesting most high god also didn't give all this to one man thank you very much i'm trying to break it down to you guys so you can see where i'm coming from now, let's just read it one more time. And the Lord said, behold, there is one race and one lip of all. So if they're different genera, this is different, different genes. Thank you. Different animals. Look, that means that this had to take place. Chapter 10, verse 25. And to Eber were born two sons, the name of one, Paleg, because in his days, the earth was divided, and the name of his brother, Jectan. Now, before you get carried away, remember, there's other abysses. Didn't even know about that, or didn't even recognize that, I should say, till now. Here we're going to go, and we're going to read one more thing, so that way nobody thinks that I'm trying to pull the wool esky over their eyes. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. So, I want to read uh, the sons of Kam. Kus and Mezraim, Pu and Canaan. And the sons of Kus, Saba and Evila and Sabat and Sabata and Regma and Sabataka. And the sons of Regma, Saba and Dadan. Hold on, listen to this. And Kus begot Nebrad. He began to be a giant upon the earth. He was a giant hunter before the Lord God. Therefore, they say, as Nebrod, the giant hunter before the Lord, and his kingdom was the beginning, and the, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babylon, and Orech, and Arkad, and Kalain, and the land of Sinar. Out of that land came Asur, and built Nineveh, and the city Rebuth, and Kalak, and Dase between Nineveh and Kalah. This is the great city. Now don't get this Asur mixed up with the same guy who later becomes the child 
where the Assyrians come from. And I'm going to read that to you, but I need you to, 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 to really buckle down for just one moment because we have to go back. No, we don't have to go back and read about no animals. We're going to identify right now in the bloodline of one Abraham. And I wanted to read that Nebrod thing to you because I brought up the land of Nebrod way earlier. And, um, when, 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 when the people are digging the trenches in the land of Nebrod, right on, or whatever happens in particular in that land. So everywhere I just mentioned to you, Babylon, Orek, Arkad, and Kalein in the land of Sinar. Not the fake Babylon, not the spiritual ones, the real ones. Um, so it's going to go down over there. So whatever happens is not going to be in this physical land. However, let's just keep reading. So lions, tigers, dogs, wolves, right? So what's funny is that, and among them was born a white bull, is it doesn't clarify the animal. Ha, come on. It doesn't clarify the animal that one Abraham is. Now, let's just read about the earth getting scattered. And the Lord scattered them thence over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city and the tower. And they left off building the city and the tower. On this account, its name was called Confusion, because there the Lord confounded the languages of all the earth. And thence the Lord scattered them upon the face of all the earth. Ah, and these are the generations of Sim. So Sim is the white bull. So the white bull has in his bloodline lions for sure. One of the things that I also wanted to point out was, do you notice that the different genera is only pointed out. Uh, Nebrod would have been born before there was different genera. Are you understanding that? Do you get that? Do you, are you sure you get that, everybody? Nebrod would have been born before the earth split up. Yes. Right around the time, maybe he might have been alive, but when it split up, you know what I mean? And still took over some stuff, but he would have been alive before that. So what's so amazing is that when you read about lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, and hyenas in, part in particular, and you don't read about the wild ass anywhere, right? That wild, uh, the wild boar is mentioned, but the wild ass is not an animal that's brought up. I want you to think about that for a moment, okay? Now, there's a lot of other little things that go with this, but I'm I'm speaking more specifically to the fact that the people were considered a lamb in one verse and then a lion in another. See, the lion of Judah goes back to this very happening right here, explained in the book of Enoch, but actually more in-depth explain as to how there was different genera able to take place. Right? I've been talking about this for a long time. And they came from Middle Earth. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. They sure did. That's the only way the genera would have changed. Listen, y'all. If they all begat one race, if all the people were one were the same, that means that the wives all look the same. All the people, you can't you can't be different. Word, and even if this is indicative of of the of the changing of the languages, it still doesn't it still doesn't make sense as to why all these other people are considered unclean animals. Word. Now the Most High God is is also indicating that that the that there is uncleanness in the bloodline of the people that are chosen, right? But their uncleanness is a ravenous beast uncleanness, not like uh, 
not like a filthy animal like a swine, right on, or a pestilent animal like a squirrel. I do apologize that this is taking this long, but I, I, I feel better doing it like this. I really do. I feel like this is necessary and this is appropriate. Um, Joshua 24, verse 1. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Silo and convoked their, their elders and their officers and their judges and set them before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers at first sojourned beyond the river, even Tarah, the father of Abram, the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abram from the other side of the river, and I guided him through all the land, and I multiplied his seed, and I gave him Isaac, and I gave to him Isaac, and I gave to Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave to Esau Mount Seir for him to inherit. And Jacob and his sons went down to Egypt and became there a great and populous and mighty nation. And the Egyptians afflicted them. And I smote Egypt with the wonders that I wrought among them. And afterwards, God brought out our fathers from Egypt. And ye entered into the Red Sea. And the Egyptians pursued after our fathers with chariots and horses into the Red Sea. And we cried aloud to the Lord. And he put a, and he put a cloud and darkness between us and the Egyptians. And he brought the sea upon them and covered them. And your eyes have seen all that the Lord did in the land of Egypt. And ye were in the wilderness many days. Now let's just stop and let's just read that first part again. He says, what? Your fathers at first sojourned beyond the river, even Terah, the father of Abram, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. Okay, listen. Does this not sound like? And they be, and they began to bring forth beasts of the field and birds, so that there arose different genera, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, swine, falcons, vultures, kites, eagles, and ravens. And among them was born a white bull. And that bull, excuse me, and they began to bite one another talking about all these animals. And that white bull which was born amongst them begat a wild ass and a wild bull with it. Excuse me. And a white bull with it. And the and the wild asses multiplied. But that white bull which, which was born begat a black boar, Esau, and a white sheep, Jacob. And the former begat many boars. But that sheep begat 12 sheep. And those 12 sheep had grown. And they gave up one of them to the asses. And those asses gave up that sheep to the wolves, the Egyptians, and the asses being the Ishmaelites. And now, excuse me, and that sheep grew up among the wolves. So really a sheep in wolf's clothing would be more appropriate than a wolf in sheep's clothing. Anyway, let's just keep it pushing. We're going to skip a few verses. And he called that sheep, which escaped the wolves, and spake with it concerning the wolves, that it should admonish them not to touch the sheep. And that sheep went to the wolves, according to the word of the Lord. And another sheep met it, and went with it. And the two went, and entered together into the assembly of the wolves, and spake with them, and admonished them not to touch the sheep. Hold on, but let's just keep it pushing. And those wolves did not yet see the sheep. They proceeded into the midst of that sea. And the wolves followed the sheep, and those wolves ran after them into that sea. And when they saw the Lord of the sheep, and I skipped forward, they returned to flee before his face. But that sea gathered, its, gathered, to, gathered itself together, and it, and it became as it, had, as it had been created. And the water swelled and rose till it covered those wolves. And I saw to all those wolves who pursued those sheep perish and were drowned. But those sheep escaped from that water 
and went forth into a wilderness. Hmm. Did he not just say at the end of all the stuff he said? And the Egyptians? Excuse me. And he brought the sea upon them. Excuse me. There we go. And covered them. And your eyes have seen all that the Lord did in the land of Egypt. And ye were in the wilderness many days. See, I have to read all these different things to, to, to give credence to the fact that lions were in the bloodline of one Abraham. Now we're going to quickly read the bloodline of Abraham and we're done. Sim was 100 years old and begot a Faza, the second year after the flood. Now we're going to keep in mind, right on, that when Eber was born, the earth was divided. Okay. And our father, excuse me, and he had, and lived after he had begotten our father 500 years and begot sons and daughters and died. And our father lived 135 years and begot Canaan. And our father lived after he begot Canaan 400 years and he begot sons and daughters and died. And Canaan lived 130 years and begot Salem. And Canaan lived after he had begotten Salem 330 years and begot sons and daughters and died. And Sailor lived 130 years and begot Eber. And Sailor lived, and Sailor, Sailor lived after he had begotten Eber 330 years and begot sons and daughters and died. Stop right there. I'm going to read something to you and I need y'all to understand that I am not tripping. The genetics, the genetics of the three, mo of the, of, of the three mothers and the children that had all bred together, had finalized themselves with the mitigated lives uh, 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 of, of, of what the, the men like Shem, Kam, and Japheth. So Shem lived 600 years. So the indication is that his mother didn't live as long as his father did. You see what I'm saying? So maybe 400 years or something like that, right? The women that they're laying down with and giving children to don't live as long as they do. But this is credence. This gives credence to people not living the full lives that they were supposed to live before the flood even came on, because the Most High God had to had to mitigate and put a cap on the lives of the giants who were seeking to live 500 years, which would have been almost an eternity for something like that. Let's go ahead and keep it pushing. That's why. 120 years was the the, the, the the time span that I'm understanding given to them and not 500 years of a life. However, let's go ahead and keep it pushing. And Canaan lived after he begotten Selah 330 years and begot sons and daughters and died. And Selah lived 130 years and begot Eber. And Selah lived after he begot Eber 330 years. And he begot sons and daughters and died. Now remember, when Eber was born, right on, right? He 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 has Pale. And Eber lived a hundred and thirty-four years and begot Pale. And Eber lived after he had begotten Pale two hundred and seventy years. And he begot sons and daughters and died. And Pale lived a hundred and thirty years and begot Ragal. And Peleg lived after he had begotten Ragal 209 years. Now, do you guys hear the great decrease? There was a 60-year decrease, okay? Right on. And then there's a 51-year decrease. So, between whatever takes place in the timeline of Eber, right on, and Peleg, because in, his, in, in those days the earth was divided, one could easily contend what I'm saying, or you, you don't know about the balancing out of the bloodlines, but just like I look at Lamech not living as long, the event of Noah's birth could have actually mitigated his life, could have taken years off, could have taken a lot of time off of his life. Now, when I look at the magnitude of it, the opening of the earth in the time when Paleg would have been born that could have been very stressful and driven down the life. Now, 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 Paleg himself having a shorter life, I just really have to contend, comes from the things that came out the middle of the planet. Because people's lives and, and, and Regal 
continue to get shorter and shorter. Now hear this. And Regal lived after he had begotten, excuse me, and Regal lived 132 years and begot Sharuk. And Regal lived after he had begotten Sharuk 207 years and begot sons and daughters and died. And Sharuk lived 130, 130 years and begotten a core. And Sarukh lived after he had begotten the core 200 years and begot sons and daughters and died. And the core lived 179 years and begot Terah. And the core lived after he had begotten Terah 125 years and begot sons and daughters. And he died. And Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram. And these are the generations of Terah. And Terah begot Abram, the core, and Aram. Now, they're also triplets just like Shem, Kam, and Japheth. This is why the white bull and the likes and the lions born among... See, this is why it's, 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 it's deeper than what people think it is. Man, I love you guys for your patience. I really do. Um, Lion of Judah is going to have a couple more installments. Um... A lot of people probably feel like this didn't really explain the line of Judah, but really I had to give credence to everything it's about. It's bigger than just what people think it is. It's really actually about the Chaldeans. That's who it's about. That's who it's about. Can't stress it enough. Y'all take it easy.